Okay guys, so here we are. We got the auto follow. That's all good. We can run through a bunch of different follow, a uh, bunch of different users and follow them or unfollow them. Next, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna create we're gonna create an auto liker. So just go ahead and start a new file, call it autoliker.rb, and we're actually going to copy and paste um, most of this over. Let's see here. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna copy and paste everything through here, the sleep right under where it clicks the login button. So copy all that over, so we don't have to redo any of that. One thing you are going to undo, or uh, remove, is this user's array, because we're not gonna need that anymore. So right now you should have just um, your libraries, uh, water, uh, pry, which is the Ruby REPL that we interact with if we need to. Um, which uses the underlying framework of the Ruby readline, which is just a um, interactive Ruby shell and IRB. And then we use the awesome print uh, for just um, console output to make it a little bit easier to read. And the credentials file is just for me. I will show you guys how to do this probably in the next video or maybe a couple of videos. It's pretty easy, um, but there's just no, no point yet. So your username should be a string, your password should be a string. Um, again, it would just look like uh, this. So mine again is in a different file, so I don't show all you guys. And um, yeah, so we come down here. We're still using incognito window because why not? We are then direct. Uh, we're then navigating to the login page. We're saying to the console that we're logging in, or we're, we're outputting to the console that we're logging in. We're setting our username in the in the text um, field with the username name in it as an attribute, and same thing with the password. We're coming down here and we're clicking the button that has these classes, which is the login button, which we've already established, and then we're sleeping for two seconds. So, now to make an auto liker, one of the main things that we're going to want to do is um, basically, and I've already you can see over here to to the left, actually you might not be able to see it because my picture is going to be there. Let me scroll this up. Okay, so you should be able to see this, but basically when you are hovering over, this span has this um, this class, course, bright, like, like heart, open. If I like it, you can see it changes to like heart, full. So we know that that's um, that's the class that we want to that we want to kind of um, pay attention to. So the first thing that we want to do, and I'm gonna again copy. I'm gonna be copying and pasting some stuff over, but for now let's just say um, if browser span, uh, and we'll look for it by class, and we'll copy this. And again, we just need this one. The other one doesn't matter at all. Come over here. And we're going to say exists. If it exists, then we're going to say browser. If it, if it exists, we want, we want to go through each one and click it basically. So we're going to say browser.spans, as in plural, it has an S. So the S means we can use the dot, the dot each um, loop on it, whereas span you cannot. When it's um, singular in water, uh, it looks for the first one. If it's plural like this, it, it brings back a list of them. So spans uh, with that same class. I'll just copy and paste this real quick. And I'll say dot each. And we're going to do a similar loop to what we did earlier, where we just hit it with the open close bracket. We're going to do uh, val. And then we're going to bring it down here and close it out. So first thing we want to do is val.click. So each for each um, for each element within the, which within the array that it passes to us uh, of all the different things that have that class, all the different elements that have that class, we want each one to be called val, and then we want to take that val or value and click it. Next, what we want to do, which we need to add to the top, but let's start a light counter just so we can keep track because I know that we're going to want one later. So I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to say like counter equals zero and we'll increment it here if we need to 
Now, let's say after we get done with that, we want to say we want to we want to output how many photos we've just liked. So let's go down here right under the dot each loop. We'll come down here and say photos. And we'll say liked and we'll say we'll add the light counter. So that loop is pretty good. Now this is an if loop. Now let's say let's say let's say that this class didn't exist at all. This um, I'll just call it hearts open class for now. But this class, the hearts open class, let's say it didn't exist at all. Then we want to output that to the console so we know we don't want to just like let it go blank and not do anything. So let's go ahead and add an else here. And if if else, we'll say uh, AP, which so we'll output it. We'll say no media to like right now. Right now, yo. Sorry, homie. We tried. And um, and that should be the end of our if else conditioner conditional that checks if that exists, and then if so, clicks it. Else else it else put outputs to the console. Yeah, that looks good. So, and yes, these messages are exactly how I make them when I'm testing stuff and doing things on actual apps that I use. Um, everyone that works with me loves it. <laughs> so that's good to go. Now, what else do we need here? After this is done, we want to keep track of how many rounds. So each time it circles through this, um, we want to add a round, so this way we can keep track of it. Number of rounds plus equals one, so we'll increment that. Let's add it up here as well. Number of rounds equals zero, so we'll instantiate it. And um, I'm going to copy and paste this over, but I'm going to use a put string method. Put string, got some dashes here as a separator, and I'm going to do the like counter divided by the number of rounds and then say likes per round on average. This way it outputs to the console exactly how many likes per round. This way we know if, um, and we're gonna need this in a few minutes, in the future how, how much we should scroll down. If I show you this page right now, and I'll exit, I'll exit out of the console so I can actually show you, and I'll actually refresh it real quick. <clears throat> Hopefully nothing embarrassing comes up. If I scroll all the way to the bot, like you can see where the scroller is right here, right? So if it only grabbed this page, it would only grab, say, I don't know, I think 20 results, it shows the first 20. But when you get to the bottom, it opens up some more. So we're gonna add something that scrolls to the bottom a few different times. See, it scrolled, we're gonna have it scroll a few times so we can check. I was just testing this, so there's a lot of likes on my page. So I definitely need that scrolling feature in place right now. Um, but so for now, yes, it's gonna be put string, like counter, with it within, <clears throat> don't forget you have to put uh, the uh, the hash sign, open bracket, close bracket, whenever you're inputting Ruby into a string. Um, so like counter divided by number of rounds, and then likes per round on average. And then what we want to do, just for testing, you would obviously probably make it longer. You could keep it this way, I guess, if you wanted to. Uh, but ooh, what am I doing? Sleep, sleep for sleep. Well, let's sleep it for 30 seconds, just like we did in the last one. And just for kicks, I'm gonna go ahead and put this pry uh, down here again. The pry, start binding. Just in case we we want to comment something out and get to that and stop it, because the way our program is gonna be set up again with another infinite loop, just like it was in the last one, it won't stop until we hit Control C on our in our terminal or in our console. This way, uh, it's on us, which means we won't ever really see this pry method. I like to have it here in case I just want to comment something out real quick. And just check something. It's it's easier, um, and I'm just used to it. I've always I've always used it when when using these. So like I said, the next thing that we're gonna want to do is scroll, right? So right after we um, we click the login button, we sleep for two seconds. Then we're gonna be on this page that you see right in front of you. And what we're gonna do is we want to say three times, oh, do, and we're gonna say uh, we don't even need this, but we'll say I. Oh God, guys. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> we'll just say I um, for incrementer. And uh, 
so I had to actually look this back up. I've used it before, and actually I've answered a few questions with this on Stack Overflow because people don't seem to have a good way to get to the bottom of a page. But if you use um, the driver class within browser, you can actually uh, access the underlying um, actual driver and you and just execute uh, JavaScript. So we're going to use the method execute script, and it's going to be, and this is what we're inserting as JavaScript window. You, so you can put any, you can put any JavaScript here, by the way. And we're and on the x-axis we're not going to do anything, but on the y-axis we're going to do document dot body dot scroll height. Seems pretty pretty straightforward simple right and so we're gonna do that three times this way it'll scroll down three times to the very bottom of the page and we'll sleep for one second in between each one just because I know it takes a second for it to actually load the rest of the, uh, the stuff I hate having to sleep things like I don't mind it too much because like this is a small program and a big program sleeping for a second um, you know times that by a hundred calls like you know that's a lot of time so it depends on what you're doing, but in our case, sleeping uh, will work just fine. Now what we want to do next, though, is we want to add all this into a while true loop, just like we did in the last one, so that it'll keep running this loop until we're ready for it to stop. Let's hit end there. Um, let's run through this again real quick. So we log in, while true will be in this loop, three times do browser driver execute script window scroll by document body height or body dot scroll height sleep one second then we move on if the if the span with class uh, hard open exists then browser spans for each click increment light counter afterwards put out output to the console how many photos we've liked if if none of that if it doesn't exist on the page then we'll put an output in a message saying sorry can't find it number of rounds we increment that then we put that into a th uh onto the console as the average likes per round and then we sleep it and then i think we're i think we're good so let me try to run this ruby auto liker dot rb it'll be an incognito window let's see if it works on the first try it looks good to me. I don't see any errors. So it's just scrolling now. And now it's going through each each photo and liking it. So it just said photos liked 13. Let's let's wait the 30 seconds and see what happens. So right now there's 13 likes per round on average. Um, the next time if it can't find any because like the way Instagram works though is when you keep refreshing it starts to show you other media because it, it just shows you the popular media initially it doesn't show you all your media anymore or maybe it's just my account because I have more followers um, but I'm pretty sure that's what they're kind of moving to the same thing that they do with the Facebook top feed uh, this way they can charge uh, businesses and brands to promote their posts so it's, it's going through it again it's now scrolling through the next three the next three uh, pages again these all look familiar from when I was testing the program, so I think I've liked all these. We'll see. Okay, so it did still find a lot. So it liked 36. So 36 plus the 13, that's 49, divided by two rounds. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The total photos liked. Okay, so we're doing the total. That's right. So 36 divided by two rounds is 18 likes. Uh, per round, so this is right. Everything's good there. Um, I wanted to. I want to give it one more shot to see if it stops at the um, like when it says "sorry, homies" or whatever. If you can't find any, if it does again, we won't worry about it. I know it works. I did test it earlier. Plus, it just makes sense that it would. All right, so we've liked 68 photos, 22 per average. Um, I guess we'll, we'll call it there. And uh, let me stop this real quick. Yeah, we'll just call it there. And um, yeah, I don't know what quite yet what I'm going to do on the next video. I have some ideas. Um, leave it down in the comments below if you have any ideas of what you want to see next. And um, yeah, I mean, as far as this goes, this program is pretty much self-explanatory. We will get to the point where we're doing this based on hashtags and or locations. 
Um, so it will get quite a bit more extravagant. So I'm gonna show you all the little in parts and then we're gonna put them all into one bigger full Autobot app. So each, I'm just gonna show you all the little parts, the different things that we can do at a time. Commenting as well is probably what I'm gonna hit next. Um, yeah, all right guys. Um, if you need anything, hit me up in the comments. I'll try to put any information that you might need in the description, even if it's later. Later guys. I'm Steve Hawkey. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to developer. The Hawkmaster signing out.